tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone, my name is Reverend Reg and I'm here again for Practical Magic where we talk about metaphysics, consciousness, science, and spirituality. And you know, today I'm so excited because one of the topics that's really close to my heart is talking about gender, sexuality, and spirituality. And today I have one of my colleagues whom is very dear to me. His name is Father Carol, but I'll introduce more of him uh, later. For now, I just invite everyone to simply close your eyes and let's slow down a bit. Take a deep breath in. And out. Please rub both palms vigorously and touch the heart. And together, let's affirm I love myself for all that I was, all that I am, and all that I want to become. I am worthy because God made me so. And together, let's chant Satnam three times. Inhale to begin. Satnam. 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 Take a deep breath in and out. Allow the vibration of the sound to permeate every cell of your body, every organ, and every aspect of your life. And we are so grateful that we're going to have this wonderful opportunity to talk about things that are very dear to our hearts. And when you are ready, you may open your eyes. All right. Satnam, everyone. You know, introduce to you a very talented and very precious colleague of ours in the International Metaphysical Ministry. And you know, before he became an ordained priest, he was actually a network engineer and then a legal business analyst. And now he holds a PhD in holistic the public as well as the practitioners in the art of integrative medicine. In this field, he is seen as the authority in the field of photobiomodulation the use of light and laser in and around the body for treatment of disease. After surviving breast cancer himself twice, he developed a special interest and counsel of his truly unique and special nature, which allows him to create a safe and nurturing space for the exceptional outcomes. He is an ordained, he is an ordained minister in the Catholic Order of the White Robed Monks of St. Benedict and believes in bringing the nature of spiritual healing into every session that he does. No man and he is also a gifted concert pianist and his knowledge of sound and vibration adds a unique dimension to his healing and counseling practice. When at home, Carol Pyatt indulges in his practice of Aikido and making music on and off stage. So Anyway, those are all the things that are about fa Father Carol. So, without further ado, let's all welcome Father Carol Payet Eden. Great. Satnam, Father. Good evening, <laughs> your, your country. It is such a blessing to, to finally be on the show and uh, be able to share some love. Yes, exactly. And, you know, I'm very happy because I know that South Africa has very interesting uh, things to discuss at the moment, especially when it comes to the LGBTQI topic. So yes. before 
anything else, Father? How are you doing today? And what's the weather like in South Africa? It is a fantastically warm day and I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I am celebrating my, my one year anniversary this week of being a priest. So today awesome. is all about just giving thanks and uh, wow. celebrating the love of God. Wow, thank you for sharing that, Father. And congratulations as well and happy anniversary to your priesthood. Thank so, you. Now we get Yes. Uh, going back to our topic where we're talking about the LGBTQI community and you mentioned that in terms of the life of Jesus of Nazareth and that he didn't say no to anyone. Father Carol, please expand on this uh, statement and how does it relate to our LGBTQI situation around the world? Okay. So, if we can say for sure that Jesus never said no to anybody, that then, and, and our premise as, as, as the order, is that how, what gives us the right to deny people access to the sacraments yes. if Jesus never denied them those rights. Um, yes. We believe very strongly that Jesus gave us two commandments. Jesus says, mm -hmm. love God and love each mm -hmm. other. Yes. And I cannot be a Christian or a Catholic and yes. say I love and, I, and yet I hate somebody who is different to me different yes. in any way. I mean, sexual orientation, um, color, race, even other religions. Yes. We are not told by Jesus to look down on each other, to discriminate on each other. We are told by Jesus to love. And that's it. There, there are no extra rules. He says love. Yes. Thank you so much for that, uh, Father Carol, because I am concerned now about what it means that Jesus never said no to anyone because I live here in the Philippines and all my growing up years, there's always been this mindset where if you are gay, you're an LGBTQI person and if you are in a relationship with the same sex, then you're separating yourself from God. So all my adolescent years, I grew up insecure and I actually felt less valuable than the straight friends that I had. So it's so important to me actually, you know, to put closure on the things that I felt insecure about. And I'm very sure that a lot of our viewers will actually be able to relate to this because prior to us having this conversation, someone who's much older than me actually was posting something on Facebook, feeling really bad or disappointed because of his situation with his parents and he's actually an adult already and the parents are still very conservative so that's why i feel such a sense of obligation for the two of us to talk about this yes. because you want to be able to liberate the rest of the collective from the erroneous thinking that have been passed on because i think naturally all of us we want to be close to god and jesus being a central figure especially here in the philippines Mm -hmm. You want to be close to God and you want to find out what's really valid and not as far as the uh, Catholic paradigm is concerned. Because majority of Filipinos are actually Catholics or Christians. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is something that's... I, this is a topic that I feel I really need to pioneer in terms of discussing. Especially, we talk about sp science and spirituality. And yep. another thing. So I had have two very close friends who um, I came out to, and they kind of pushed me to come out to my family and to my parents. So um, they they helped me to get to that point. And then I have to say, my parents they were extremely loving, understanding, um, non judgmental. And after I came out to them. It doesn't really matter anymore. Yes, amazing. Thank you for that, Father, because I think it's such an important thing to make people, especially the younger generation of the LGBTQI, understand that, of course, in the beginning, there's going to be some form of inconvenience. It's not easy to actually talk about these things to your family. 
But I know that's true what you said that once you're able to get it out of your chest and be truthful to yourself and to the people that matter most to you, then things become easier from there. So Definitely. thank you for generously sharing your experience, uh, Father. So those two friends of yours, are they straight or are they gay like you? They are a straight couple, a husband and wife. Um, wow. Very, very dear friends, yes. Awesome. Because I can relate to that feeling where a straight friend would tell you that it's actually not a big deal. But my concern, Father, is, you know, even if people say that it's not a big deal, when you're freshly coming out of your family, there are certain wounds in the past uh, growing up. Especially mm-hmm. you've mentioned about corrective rape, rape, which is really disturbing. It's something that stays in the awareness of the person. So it has to be uh, healed in some way by someone who's a professional. And I'm really glad that you're there in South Africa. So, you know, whoever is in the position where it's very, very uncomfortable for them emotionally and mentally, someone like you is there to actually help them get over the shock and trauma of that experience. So I also want us to talk about father what does Christianity say about the LGBTQI presence? Because this has always been an issue. And this is why I wanted us to touch on the subject. Is it something that is really immoral? And, and what does immoral mean anyway for the Catholic perspective? Okay. So we need to be very aware of the fact that the Catholic perspective, uh, when, when we say that, we, we usually point to the Roman Catholic perspective. Yes. And that there are many other Catholic expressions and Orthodox expressions um, than just the Roman Catholic Church. And by saying that, I'm not negating anything from the Patriarch of Rome and mm. the, 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 the Bishop and the Pope. Um, nor the Roman Catholic Church. But when we look at Catholicism as a whole, there are many, many, many different groups. So our group, for example, falls under the old or the Dutch Catholic community. Mm -hmm. And um, if that is true, or, or with that being true, then morality then becomes a very difficult thing because we all see morality as slightly different. Yes. So... I, many of the answers that, that you are going to get today are going to be a repeat. We yes. go back to the two commandments that Jesus gave us. And when I yes. look at morality mm-hmm. I and anything in my life, I measure it against, is this showing love towards God? Is this mm-hmm. showing love towards my neighbor? Yes. And that is all. So if I love somebody and it is not necessarily the expression of love that other people uh, uh, expect. It's not about other people, it is about God. Mm -hmm. And that is, it it sounds a bit up in the air, but that is the the, the, the complete truth. As long as I'm not hurting anybody else, as long as I'm not hurting myself. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.